All right, everybody. Welcome back to yet another very special From Screen to Shelf review. I am Chase, a.k.a. the only person in the world that wants a sequel to The Exorcist Believer, joined here by Mr. Will himself. And we are here today to review, watch, and give you all of our thoughts on everything Darkman, presented in 4K by Scream slash South Factory. Stay tuned. All right, let's do this. <clears throat> Who is Darkman? Man, 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 man. Who is he? Well, I would like to think he's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> You're the son of Darkman. Son of Darkman. Son of Darkman. Yep. The son of Liam Neeson. Damn, I'd be a badass. Imagine. You'd be you'd be calling people up and letting them know that you have a very particular set of skills. And acting is not one of them. I may be a son, but they aren't genetic. Those are skills. <laughs> is he's actually really good in the movie we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> yep. Uh, which is Dark Man. Chase, uh, let's let's just open this up. Um, I don't know if you want to want to open up with this. I have an interesting, not an interesting story, but Dark Man to me. I know this is probably one of your favorite. It's probably one of your favorite Sam Raimi movies, but I think it's probably oh, one of your sure. favorite movies of that time period. Yeah, I really like it. And it's yeah. surprising my story with it. I didn't watch this too long ago. I want to say in relative three years ago, yeah. uh, maybe two years ago, the three pack lines. I'm pretty sure it's Lionsgate. The three pack Lionsgate yeah. Blu-ray that comes with one, two and three went down to like 10 bucks. And I was like, oh, this one oh. will never get one. And I never watched it. Damn. And so I bought it and I had a good blast with all three of them. Second one, not being my most preferred third one's really solid, uh, not mm -hmm. up to the standard of the first one, just in every level. But I was just really surprised, you know, it took that, that comic book superhero approach that you eventually get out of Spider-Man one, two, and three, you know, it's very prevalent. Um, mm -hmm. kind of like, um, yeah, I'll talk about that later as we go through the transfer. But you can definitely see some influences there. And there's even parts of it, like towards the last fight, that kind of remind me of Dark Knight a little bit. You know what mm. I mean? Like, you know, yeah. the, the one Dark Man and Durant um, reminds me of the Joker and Batman with the, in the construction building or like the, the weathered building. Yeah, that's that's an interesting comparison, actually. Yeah. yeah, I see those similarities. <laughs> it's interesting you brought that up. Yeah, and it actually didn't really like jive with me until this watch. I was like, this actually does kind of look familiar. And so, yeah, but uh, overall, it's just it's 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 different. You know, it, it's not based off of anything. It's just a comic book presented superhero movie. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, is it's kind of Punisher esque where it's like you feel bad for the guy. But also at the same time, it's like he kind of they, they, they don't give you this guy super, super, super good type of approach. Right. It gives you this very, very, very bleak look into an every man's every day. And what can happen when your life changes very subtly by putting your nose in the wrong business. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you're at the forefront of very powerful people. And then, you know, I, th I think the way that he handles it, you know, just from the simple design, from the the, the simple set pieces to his lair, it's just yep. very good. To the transition parts where, or even the parts where his mind is spazzing. I, that's some of my favorite parts of the movie, you know, some mm -hmm. of the more practical effects. Um, overall, yeah, this really is one of my favorite movies from that time period. It's got Sam Raimi's fingerprints all over it. It is yeah. very obvious this is a Sam Raimi movie. You know, you got Ted. Mm -hmm. You know, you you see Ted in the movie. And Sam's attached somewhere. And so, yep. um, great time with that, which, yeah, I, I want to hear your personal connection before we dissect the 4K because you said you've got a pretty special story too. Well, yeah, I had seen this when I was very young. Um, and, you know, I've, I've talked to you guys, you and Gabe before about, you know, being raised on horror from an early age. You know, my dad showed me a lot of those movies, but it was the it's it's interesting when I look back at Sam Raimi's filmography and how I was introduced to his films, because the Evil Dead films came a bit later. You know, those were yep. one of the few horror movies like those were along with The Exorcist. I didn't see those when I was younger. You know, yeah. I, I, I didn't see those films until I was a little older for obvious reasons yeah. um, that we won't necessarily get into today. But um, yeah, Dark Man was the first Sam Raimi film I had seen, I think, other than Army of Darkness. OK, I think 
Army of Darkness, I might have seen first. Okay. Yeah, I might have seen Army of Darkness first, and then I saw Dark Man. But it's interesting because Dark Man, I fell in love with as a kid because, and you were talking about how it was uh, kind of a, a precursor for the Spider Man films. I mean, this is, in my opinion, Sam Raimi was kind of laying the groundwork for the films that he would go on to do later in his career, you know, um, the Spider Man films, and more recently, you know, Doctor Strange, if we're talking about strictly superhero movies or movies within that genre. But I think Dark Man, uh, for me, uh, it was just big as a kid. I remember watching this movie like with my brother. I think we had seen the sequel at some point a couple years later, Dark Man 2, mm. um, which, because this film was 1990, and I think the second yeah. one didn't come out until, gosh, it, it, it was probably like four or five years later from what I remember um, yeah. in terms of like release release time but yeah we had probably seen it somewhere i want to say i had seen the first one probably in the late 90s you know by the time i was old enough uh and yeah i fell in love with it dude i i love the story i mean i love that this is kind of in, it, it's so interesting because it's it, it's it's ahead of its time in the aspect that it was a superhero movie but with an anti-hero like you mentioned punisher like i i loop dark man in with the I guess we can say the darker kind of of heroes of like the yeah. Marvel comic uh, universe, like Ghost Rider, Punisher, Blade, like Dark Man kind of fits in with those characters. He's he's right in their wheelhouse, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of backstory, just in terms of the story, just being a lot more bleaker, a lot darker, um, yeah. just overall just dealing with heavier subject matter. Right. Yeah. Um. So that immediately stood out to me. Even when I was younger, I kind of resonated with that, you know. And and I talked to you guys about this with uh on our superhero episode when we talked about the Marvel films. I've always gravitated towards the, I guess we can say, not necessarily more grounded because that's not necessarily the word. Because I don't want to say that the other heroes aren't necessarily grounded, but I, I just like stories that revolve around darker subject matter punisher yeah. ghost rider blade i was just attracted to those kinds of characters and i think that's why i also fell in love with uh with dark man as a kid yeah um but i think this movie in particular like i was saying it's it's just ahead of its time because it's a superhero film but it's also in a way it's it's a horror movie it's it's mm -hmm. got like some comedy in there as well so yeah. it's one of those like genre bending movies where there's a, a a lot going on and that's what i appreciate about it so much so that's kind of my uh personal connection to it just watching it as a kid and then later when i was old enough i was introduced to the evil dead movies which are obviously a lot darker but yeah. um other than army of darkness dark man was my first introduction to sam raimi as a filmmaker as a director uh as an artist so yeah it's uh it's up there with with one of my favorite things that he's done uh, other yep. than the evil dead stuff. And I think it's something that he's probably most known for. And, you know, if we're, if we're talking outside of the Spider-Man films, um, which he became famous for, you know, in the early two thousands, once those started coming out, but yeah, dark man is, uh, is a classic for me as well. So I'm curious, man, you've seen two and three, I'm assuming. I haven't seen three. I've seen two. I mean, two like I remember it? liking, but yeah, yeah, I don't remember seeing three. It's possible I may have seen it at some point. I just, my memory, I don't remember <laughs> yeah. anything about three if I have seen it. It's it's yeah. like incredibly bleak for me. It's I know it exists. That's as much <laughs> as I know about it. So I don't know. Have you seen three? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I bought that that com. I watched all three. Oh, you said you had the day. set, so yeah. you watch. You ended up watching yeah. all three of them, I assume. Okay. Yeah, it's just got the coolest like subtitle for it or subtext. It's like "Die, Dark Man, Die." It's just so cool. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so aggressive off, off yeah. the cover. So yeah. it, it I, I, if you liked two, I think you'll really like three. It's definitely not you know. There's a certain charm, you know, direction, mm. script writing, acting, cast on everything like that that mm. it brings, but. Yeah, list I I got a lot of thoughts about the the 4K transfer on this one, man. So you tell me because I, I I know you shot me like a sentence in mm. in in text about how you felt, but how did you feel about the 4K transfer? I think it looks great, dude. I mean, so here's the thing: there's been a lot of talk about this movie. A lot of people are, are so far have been really impressed uh, with this transfer because you know it was taken from the original camera negative, but the original negative, according to what I was reading and according to what other people in the community have said, 
that original negative was put through hell. Yeah. Um. So it, it's just there was a Blu-ray, the existing Blu-ray that 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 we have is is just okay, but it's it's nothing to write home about. So people were really impressed with this transfer. Um, we had the supervision of Sam Raimi, uh, as well as Bill Pope. So again, you've heard the phrase before. Well, this is the best this movie's ever looked, but I mean, yet yeah, it's another one of those situations. Yep. Agreed. Um, there's, there's a lot of warmth to it. There's a lot of color to this, yeah. uh, especially in the scenes at night. Like even when he's in the lab, like, and you think about it, like when he, when he, when he finds his laboratory in that rundown condemned building, I mean, even, even those colors seem to be, there's depth Layered. to that world yeah. with this, with this transfer. Right. And you, mm -hmm. you feel that you feel, you feel those colors kind of come to life, like the rust of the building and like the concrete and just the messiness of it all uh, is, is really, really brought to the forefront with this transfer. I think it did a really decent job of balancing that out uh, as well as with the shadows and some of the darker tones of the movie. I thought that was really well done. Even the scenes at night are, they, they look well lit. Um, I thought the black levels were okay. I mean, again, I was watching on an OLED, so everything looked really good uh, on my end. The only, I guess, quirk that I have about it, and again, this is nitpicking, like some of the um, some of the transitions and, and lens effects seem a bit dated. Mm -hmm. um, like there's one scene where, um, uh, I forget her name in the film, Julie, I think. She's played by Frances McDormand. She's, yeah. she's mourning... Uh, she's mourning the loss of of Liam Neeson's character, Darkman, and there's it's a, it's like this weird transition where she's she's like mourning, and then it shows her at the funeral, and it's just the way that the editing is, like the mm -hmm. transition just looks a little weird. It looks a bit dated, um, but other yeah. than that, other than those few moments, I mean, everything looks fantastic. So again, that's more of a nitpick for me. Yeah. But overall, yeah, I really enjoyed the transfer. I think it. I think it looks really good. Um. I will say the one thing that really stands out with this transfer to me, and I'll, and I'll ask you if you agree with this, Chase, the makeup effects. Nope. That's exactly um, what mine. Yep. And, Agreed. and so, cause I always, and this is the other thing. I always loved this movie because of how cool the makeup effects look like when he's taking yeah. the bandages off his face and he's got, you know, it's Just weird. Cause jaw. like yeah. the way his jaw is and there's like layers of like charred skin and then you have like the purple and like the red from like the blood it's like a really good combination of practical makeup effects and those colors just look fantastic with the 4k yeah. transfer for me i i thought that Very that lovely. stood out in particular that's something that i really appreciated more so uh yeah. with this upgraded uh resolution so i don't know about you no, yeah. I mean, not much more to say, a few things to add. Um, one nitpick, and I'll go and get that out of the way before I go um in on how, how good it is. But mm. the 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 with the helicopter scene, the parts in the sky actually yep. looked very modern. It looked mm -hmm. really good. But then those quick cuts where you could definitely tell like whenever he's yeah, you know, I I he's like running on stuff. Man, it's kind of jarring how quickly it goes from looking pristine to you know pretty yeah but again like you said with the source material and stuff like that it wasn't handled well you know especially when it comes to movies like this until a lot of people's films don't really get preserved and by the time that's like oh wow this was a movie done by sam raimi well this movie's mm -hmm. about 10 years old and we really didn't give a shit about storing it properly so it's already right. the rot has already started so or the 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 not caring for it aspect um that's yeah. really my only nitpick but i i'd have to say that's maybe if I were to really conjugate it together, like two minutes total worth of those jarring moments, minute and a half, maybe a minute. Um, so it's so few and far between and so quickly whenever it happens. And it's mostly like green screen and stuff like that, where they're adding it for the, like the people's safety. Yeah. And, um, but otherwise yeah, that was going to be my biggest praise was like the moments when like, you know, and like whenever the lightning hits and the way it shows on the makeup and stuff, and then you have like the layers going down and then the teeth and everything like that. Mm -hmm. It just looked awesome. And especially the scene, like his origin scene when they're in the lab and stuff like that, that just all looked immaculate. It it, it just looked so good, man. The I agree with that great. too. 
Yeah, I'm remembering the scenes of like, and and the, you have shots in there when like, especially in the beginning when he has like the melting skin, like that looked really good. Like even like the textures of the clothing, like his wardrobe with like the bandages and all that. And I was kind of getting into that when I was talking about the makeup effects, but that all looked really good. Like the detail yeah. looked really good. Like there wasn't a lot of uh, shots in this film where I looked at, and there were points where I, you know, paused and just kind of took like a better look. Um, yeah, other than the, some of the stuff you were talking about, nothing about this movie appeared uh, in terms of the shots, in terms of the resolution. None of it seemed like soft in any way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, and I will say, and like, you know, people like to crap on Scream Factory a lot, but I will say like out of all the stuff that they've put out in the last several months, this is probably on the higher end. Yeah, it's up um, there with my bloody Valentine for sure. Yeah, in, in terms of the picture quality, like the overall yeah. quality, like this, this is definitely up there. So, it's a good way to start the year for uh, for Scream Factory with with Darkman. Yeah. I will say um, that taxi scene is something that you could have mm -hmm. fooled me if it wasn't for the clothing at the beginning of this mm -hmm. for a modern yeah. day movie. Mm -hmm. it yeah, that's the that thing clean. too. Yeah, that's and that's what's great about it is that they did such a good job restoring this from that mm -hmm. original camera negative. Um, and again, with with Raimi's supervision, which is fantastic. It's always great when the, the director's involved. Um, a lot of this stuff looks like it was shot more recently, which is, which is incredible. Like, it's just yep. amazing that some of the shots in this movie and some of the scenes play out the way they do. It's, it's, it's really great. So, you know, hopefully yep. <clears throat> this is something that, you know, they look at as kind of a template moving forward, like in terms of like reference quality, so to speak in, in regards to their releases. So yeah, I, I was, I was, I was really impressed uh, with this, with this transfer, the audio, um, is kind of, it's okay. Um, it's, they have like the DTS, I think it's 5.1. Um, yeah. so again, I was hoping that they were going to do something with the audio, but I'm fine with the DTS 5.1. I mean, it's not like a game changer for me. Um, sounds but, serviceable and good. Yeah. I mean, would have been cool to have, you know, uh, elevated highs with an atmosphere. Ele yeah. A more, a more elevated mix on there, but it's, it's no issue. If if we're gonna talk about the special features, I want to have you dive into that a little bit because you said you watched most of them. Now most of these have been ported over from the existing uh, Blu-ray, yeah. but they do yeah. have some deleted scenes on here. I don't know if you had a chance to check those out. I wanted you to talk about those if you did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I kind of want to put this up there that like Scream Factory, I mu I guess must be listening to people. Because, I mean, I, I, it's, I've, I've said it. We all know. I don't got to go into too much. But I used to buy all of them. I stopped around the, the, this time last year buying all Scream slash Shout Factory releases because I wasn't happy with the special features in the yep. overall package. My Bloody Valentine, Pumpkin Head, and, and the Blob, and, and now this is kind of getting them back up there from, like, the, the Halloween collections where they were putting out some effort out there doing this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to say they don't put effort. But once I break this down, because I have most of them runtime memorized, so the newest thing on this is it has, dude, I don't know if you knew this, those deleted scenes that you and I were, I think we were texting about, or maybe we were talking about it on just some time we were just talking, but it's 37 minutes of deleted mm. scenes, 37. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, and that's that wild. wasn't on the Blu-ray. That's not on the Lion's Gate. That's new nope. to this right here. Yes. So that's really cool. Checked it out. I'll be honest with you. Um, to each their own, please form your own opinion. Were they that cool? No, I'm, I'm here to be honest. It's a lot of dialogue and there was a reason why it was cut. I, it, mm. it, most of it was from the forefront um, before yeah. his origin. So it's almost 20 minutes of that. And had that been in the movie, it would have been one of the slowest movies ever, man. Um, and then there's other some like there's a really cool, a really, really cool um, transition scene where he's like, you know, one of those spastic episodes. Mm. And I think they should have kept that because it was like 30 seconds of the deleted scenes. But shout out that yeah. um, again, original 4K transfer from the original negative. Um, like you said, uh, supervised and approved by Sam Raimi and Bill Pope. Audio commentary by Josh Rubin. Uh, another one with Bill Pope. Dissecting Darkman interview with actor Liam Neeson. That was pretty good. I did watch that. That one runs about seven and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. Interview with actor Francis McDermott. Another one. Um, that one's again about seven and a half minutes. Um, the name is Durant interview with actor Larry Drake again, seven and a half minutes. These are all newer ones for this. Yeah. 
the face of revenge interview with makeup designer tony gardner that was cool that was really cool to get some insights in the makeup hmm. um where which one is this? interviews with actor danny hicks and dan bell dark design interview with production designer randy sir sir or sir and art director Philip Dagor, vintage making of featurette, interviews with Sam Raimi, Liam Neeson, Francis McDermott, and more. When they say and more, it's like one more. I don't know why they this it doesn't save that much space not to put the other name out there, but I'm pretty sure it's from the guy that plays Durant. Um, hmm. those are actually about 30, 35 minutes a piece. I watched Sam Raimi's and I watched Liam Neeson's, and that was really cool. Dude, Liam Neeson was the most geeked person in the world about this movie during that old school featurette man he was just yeah. so happy man it's just so cool to see how happy he was um theatrical trailer i'm always going to say this watch those it's so cool to see how different movies are presented today versus then it gives you a lot of insight that was really cool tv mm. spots again really cool still galleries posters and production stills behind the scenes makeup effects and storyboards um yeah most of that total is over three and a half hours yeah that's amazing it's really good and none of yeah. it's on the 4K. I think the only one that is is the audio commentary. But only yeah, the one 4K, of them. I think it was one of the new audio commentaries, right, that they yeah. threw on there from what yep. I remember. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so you said you didn't get the chance to check it out. Do you want to show people our steelbook real quick? Yeah, you know what? We actually, it's funny. We usually show that first yeah, and we, we kind of got, we just got right into yeah. it. So, yeah, let's showcase the steelbook here. So you got, what's that? that's the front and back of it. Let me see mm. if I can. Love the, the way that glosses. There. Yeah, this is a really nice steel book. I, I wish Scream Factory, and I've said this before, I wish they would do more steel books. Yeah. Um, they used I to did be known my, for it. Uh, what's that? They used to be known for it with those like My Bloody Valentine, The Blobs, Motel Hell. They they, they did a lot more with their Blu-ray steel books than they have so far with uh with 4K. But I gotta say, I mean, this I'm really impressed with it. Can we just I don't know if you saw this. I think you, I don't know if it was you that joked with me about this, but look at that. I love that they, I love that they have like the floating head there. Yeah. On the, uh, on the disc. Yeah. That looks I got cool. Out of that. Yeah. There's a, yeah. So. And shout out one of the special featurettes on there. I didn't know that you could shut down entire nine city blocks for four weekends just for a helicopter hanging scene. That's mm. wild. But they did that for the helicopter scene. Uh, and quick Walmart review. I am the first person I know that has ordered from Walmart. So I know you were curious. Well, I'll say it for about 20 seconds. They yep. shipped it in cardboard. Uh, oh, do you still have my... the packaging? <laughs> yeah, let's show, let's show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they, they shipped it in cardboard. Um, Interesting. And yeah, it, not a single dent. I mean, you could but imagine. It was, yeah, it was packaged okay. Yeah. yeah, it was packaged okay. You mean it wasn't in a box three times the size with no padding no. at all, just <laughs> rattling around in there? No, no, oh, that's nothing. interesting. Oh, I mean, funny. I was, I was kind of like maybe bubble mailer would have been better, but no, it yeah. worked. Front door delivery, really smooth. Got here in three days. Can't mm -hmm. really complain. Not cool. bad at all. So, so um, yeah, what would you give the move? Like, I'm gonna have you score the movie itself, and then. As far Not as the 4K. release, we'll we'll get in. Yeah, let's let's score the we'll score the movie overall. What's your rating for the actual film? Uh, I'd give it a strong eight point five nine, for sure. Okay, really cool. fun, really fun. I mean, you don't even have to be a fan of superheroes just to enjoy a good vigilante story. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. I'd give it four out of five stars for me. I mean, it's a solid four star. I mean, I I go out of the the five star. I, I do the five star rating scale, but yeah, four out of four out of five for me for the movie itself. As far as the packaging here, I mean, the Steelbook. Uh, if we're talking about overall packaging, extras, transfer quality, I mean, this release overall, I'd highly recommend it. I mean, it's like a four, yep. four and a half out of five for me. Yep, I'd give it you the know? whole package. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd say, yeah, nine. It, it's it's a great package. It really yeah. is. Whether you go Steelbook, Standard, there's no difference. There's nothing different. I know sometimes yeah. people ask that. It all comes with the same stuff. But yeah, absolutely. I, the only thing I would say is I wish they'd get into the new embossing and debossing trend. Yeah. And because I've been getting kind of spoiled with that. And this is, as, as cool as I much like this, it would have given it just a little bit more life with that. But I like the great things for what it is, not what it isn't. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, yeah, um, and for what it is, it's really cool, but I think that just would have been really nice to get that embossing on there. But yeah, I hear you. Yeah. 
Well, I think that's going to do it. Do you have anything else to add before we uh, before we close it up here? No, that that's um, that's a wrap on Dark Man and um, a strong recommendation. I'm looking forward. You know, I don't think we got to release this strong. I think Scream Factory ended their year stronger than they started it out for the most part. Um, they had some really good shout releases, but other than that, I'm I'm super excited to see what they kind of bring us in the future. I'm excited to hopefully get Willie's Wonderland. I heard decent things about that. So, um, yeah, I'm just stoked to see what they're, they're going to give us the rest of the year. You know, we've got Chucky and Carrie. I'm the only person in the world excited for those, but that, that's another topic because I don't have to yeah. worry about there being one hole over there on the wall for all those child's play movies I've got. Maybe we can do, we'll do another video where Gabe and I bust your balls about buying uh, Carrie Ciao. 2019 on, on 4K. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll, see. <clears throat> we'll see. For sure. Absolutely. And so that's time, gonna, everybody. yeah, that's gonna do it, folks. Guys, if you like this video as well as the other content we put out on this channel, check that banner out down below. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way, when we post stuff like this, you guys can be notified. We appreciate you guys checking out the video. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys soon. Till next time, everybody.